Next in the den is 32-year-old Anglo-Dutch entrepreneur... My name is Andrew Everston. Andrew Everston. A professional hockey player in Holland, he's hoping he'll be victorious in the den today. I've played in the Dutch Premier League for over 10 seasons, so I feel my time has come to swap the hockey stick in for, uh, for my business and my career. It's water pipe, isn't it? Isn't tap water usually free? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to have to wet our appetite. Boo -boo. Hello Dragons, my name is Andrew Everston and I'm Managing Director of Join the Pipe UK. I'm here today asking for a £100,000 investment in return for a 5% stake in the business Join the Pipe. Unfortunately, plastic waste from single-use plastic bottles has become a worldwide problem. In Britain alone, we are using over 35 million of these bottles every day. At Join the Pipe, we encourage people to drink tap water using reusable water bottles and filling these from easy to use sustainable drinking water fountains. Our company is currently based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, where, where we have installed over 2,000 of these water fountains and sold close to 2 million of our water bottles. I feel the time is right now to come to the UK where calls are being made to cut down on single-use plastic and to install water fountains that are access accessible for everyday use. Now I'd like to hand one of our bottles to you to try out and uh, to fill it from uh, one of our sustainable water fountains. Thank you. Andrew Everston wants £100,000 for 5% of his company. Is it plastic? It's BPA-free plastic, yeah. That installs tap water fountains in both public and private spaces. Would you like to try one of our water fountains? Yeah and sells reusable water bottles. You can if you want, I kind of get how it works. But will the dragon see his idea as a liquid asset? So it's still water and uh, carbonated. Is it filtered? There's a filter system in the indoor water fountain. Uh, this is just tap water from the mains. Tej Lalvani is first to see if there are any leaks in Andrew's business plan. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Quite interesting uh, business you've got here. Yeah. So in Netherlands, um, the government doesn't provide this facility at all. Water companies in Holland are actually one of our biggest uh, clients. They will buy one of our water fountains and they will install it for the general public, parks, uh, shopping centres. So how many um, uh, have been installed so far? So we have, uh, of these, of the three you see here, we have installed 2,000 in, in the Netherlands. So, with um, a valuation of two million pounds. Yeah. I presume you've got quite a lot of sales for these bottles. You've done 2,000 yep. of that. So what's your sales turnover last year? So last year in, uh, in Holland, obviously I'm bringing it over to the UK now, was uh, around 1.6 million euros. The business has been running for about five years in, the, in Holland. I've been with the company for uh, about three and a half. Okay, so you didn't found the company? I didn't found it, but I'm 100% owner of Join the Pipe UK. Ah, so wait a minute. Who owns the... The actual original uh, IP for So it. the original uh, license is, is owned by the founder. I have a, a license agreement with him to be the exclusive Join the Pipe UK um, seller and also other countries if necessary. Well, well, that changes the dynamic significantly and for a dragon in terms of investment. So is there any opportunity to own equity in the parent company? Uh, for the parent company at the moment, no. Andrew. Yes. Hi. What are your rights to the rest of the world? So I have the right to first refusal. Have you got some contractual rights to the rest of the world, I like a two-year period or something, or is it just a case of your Dutch founder could come to you yep. and say, Andrew, I've got an interested client in the US. Yep. Are you ready to go there or not? You say, oh, crikey, I'm busy in the UK. Yep. I'm not ready yet. Give me time. And he says, no, I'm sorry, I'm ready to go in the US. Well, I, I, I would still have the first right to refusal. But um, only if you moved fast then, if he'd found someone already. Yep. You haven't got a two-year window or something. Um, it's something we could, we would negotiate. Okay, uh, so you haven't got a two-year window? I haven't. For, for the rest of the world, no. No. 
this isn't new. I've had this in my business with water dispensers for over 10 years. You've redesigned outdoor drinking pipes. I think it's not always easy to leave the house with a bottle and to, to locate No, no, let's focus, let's fountain. not to go away from where I'm okay. focusing. You're just a product supplier. You're a fountain supplier to local councils then. Well, we've proven to be a very good supplier. I'm not in, saying in you're quality. a bad one. I'm no. just saying that's what you are. And these bottles are complete red herring. This is just a way of getting and finding ways to get additional income. Because well, you can buy this in every, in any yeah. store. I agreed, um, but we want to offer the public a, a, a opportunity to not having to go into a store and buy a single-use bottle. I want to bring the whole concept to the UK. So you're well, not it's not a concept, because this concept does exist. A bitter blow for Andrew, as Peter Jones dishes out a damning verdict on the originality of this aquatic idea. And it seems Tuka Suleiman was expecting much more from Andrew's offering. When I saw this, yep. I honestly thought that you had transformed water in some sort of filter system yep. to make it really, really healthy for people. Yep. And I thought, yeah, I can see why that's worth two million pounds. Now that you're explaining, I'm wondering whether you think we're idiots or what? Now, how on earth did you get a valuation of two million pounds? So I'm, I'm planning to, to turn over um, uh, two million in the first year. Two million in the first year? Yeah, that is, that is 250 water fountains and 400,000 uh, water bottles. Do you have any documentation that would tell us that you've got orders for it, to produce it, you've got something yeah. that's going to convince me that you'll do 200,000 turnover, not two million. I've had a lot of interest from uh, Holland, flown over to the UK a lot for meetings with big companies who are very interested. Is that a no? Uh, we've, we've, we've had orders from schools for our water bottles and, uh, and water fountains just recently, yes. What's the value of your physical orders today, as of today? So that would be between 10 and 20,000 pounds. 10 and 20,000 pounds. Well then, how on earth can you value it for 2 million? Because I feel we will, with the need and with the, um, the, the ask for uh, water fountains at this moment in the UK, I feel that we can place 250 water fountains over here and 400,000 uh, water bottles. What stops me from getting my design team to design a fountain like that? Well, we have a patent on the design. No, 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 Sorry. I can change it. I can make it can square. Yeah. I, can make, I can make it into a monkey. I can make it into an elephant. What stops me from designing something similar? We feel no. that... What stops me? Um, quick answer? Yeah. Nothing. Good, you've answered it. What stops me from importing these from wherever to sell for 2 99 Nothing. Right. I'm going to tell you where I stand. It's not for me, and I'm out. OK. With one dragon down, Andrew will need to work hard to stop his watery wish running away from him, especially as Tej Lalvani revisits that big issue of product ownership. The problem you have here is you've got a company in Holland yeah. who's done quite well. They've taken five years to make sales of, well, approximately 1.35 million pounds. Yeah. And you're coming here into the UK like the business is turning over that money, but it's not. It's turning over zero. So you can't value a business for two million pounds, especially when you don't have the IP for it. It doesn't make sense. For that reason, I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna join you on this. I'm out. Andrew, you're very chilled. A bit like your water. Yeah. Considering you're under some intense questioning here about what is this all about? You're asking us to make the leap that you can do two million in yeah. one year yeah. in the UK. Product's not great, 
design's not great. I thought it was where you plugged your electric car into. So I'm sorry, my well has run dry, and I have to say, I'm out. Andrew. Yeah? I so want to like it, you know, because it's just doing lovely stuff. But actually, I think you're just too late. And your valuation, you've got to own this market. Yeah. You've got to sell a lot of bottles. Yeah. 400,000 plastic bottles in a really crowded marketplace. I can't, you know, you must know how many lovely bottles there are out there. Yeah, of course, I know how many bottles there are. Uh, I feel that our bottle does differentiate to other okay, bottles. Okay, what is why? There's the design, obviously. Um, it can be used for tourists, because this is the city bottle. We've had a bottle made uh, with, with the London logo on it. Well, that's a gift market. I mean, that's yeah. not being funny, but that's pretty... Yeah, but that's also that one market we can, we, can, uh, yeah. uh, we can target. Do you know, if you come in for less money and not being a bit crazy on your valuations... Would that be something we could work towards? What, what, in terms of the valuation? Well, actually, no. It's what I think the business would be worth. Would be worth, not today. That was a mistake. OK. I hope you get as many out there as possible. Yeah. I think you'll make some money out of it. But it just is not an investment for me. Okay. Good luck, but I'm out. With Deborah Meaden pulling the plug on any potential investment by her, it leaves just Peter Jones to keep Andrew's hopes alive. You should have pitched it very differently. OK. Your pitch should have been, I want £100,000 for 100% of my company. And I'd like to have the opportunity to prove the concept. And if I can prove the concept and achieve these targets, I would like to request, say, 20% of the company back. OK. That would have been fairly unique in the den. You might have got interest. On the basis that you didn't do that, I can't invest, and that's why I'm out. Thank you all. Thank you very much. So Andrew heads across the expanse of water that is the North Sea, back to Holland, empty-handed. Even though five well-known investors have said no, that doesn't stop me from bringing the product over, and hopefully this time next year I will be a millionaire.